Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Roundtable 2 Qualifier Tournament. My name is Tykeny, and joining me soon will be Miles. We're just waiting on him to get in. Today's match is Maliszewski versus Xylus. I know a match that's very much looked forward to. Two very popular and beloved players in Maliszewski and Xylus, and sure to be an exciting match as well. Very good stuff coming up here. And of course, this match is actually happening. We had a problem with our last match that ended up having to be streamed elsewhere on the BTMC channel. This match happening right here, hopefully right on time as well. So we'll be getting into that in just a moment here. All right, looking at the stats, here we have Maliszewski. I mean, considered potentially the best tournament player in the world. You know, the best player in Europe, absolutely, carrying all of Poland through OWC. Uh, the champion of Circle Circuit Championships. And, you know, just as I've said, potentially the best player of all time when it comes to tournaments. It's... There's a lot of comparisons to, I think, uh, Vaxe nowadays with, with Maliszewski, and it's it's hard to deny them. And honestly, as far as his best skill sets, he's kind of just good at everything. And that's going to be very scary for Xylus. Um, obviously, he's going to be particularly strong on hidden stuff and tech. And that's going to be where, where Xylus falls out. Now let's move on to the next player here, Xylus, who I, okay, I didn't know this. He played Osu in front of his classroom. Now Xylus, a very, very, very well-known speed player as well as actually a really good hidden reading player as well. I don't think there, there's too much words to say about Xylus. It's very known what he does, the Canadian OWC team captain. Pretty beloved. Just a really good speed player overall, and I think that's going to be a lot of what he brings to this match. And a reminder as well, if you're interested in watching Zootinator versus Enry, that is currently happening over at twitch.tv slash btmc. But right here, we'll have Maliszewski versus Xylus. I do believe Maliszewski is in the lobby right now. Or, no, he was. Okay, neither player in the lobby. Maliszewski's ready. Not sure on Xylus. And I'll take me a look at the pool here. I think we are going to see a lot of hidden in this, just given the players that we have. I think we're going to see hidden three picked by Maliszewski at some point, hidden two by Xylus. We will also probably see hidden four picked by Xylus, assuming none of these get banned, of course. Just given the player's skill sets, hidden four is this week's speed slot. And... Finally joining me here is Miles. Welcome, Miles. Hey, Tykeny. Um, I just lost a tiebreaker, and I'm ready to commentate some round table. Here we've got Malshevsky and Xylase. It's going to be a really good match. And where are we? Are we in the pick band? Uh, we are, yeah. We are rolling. Sounds good. Got here right in the nick of time. Uh, one of my teammates left during the tiebreaker, so I got to prepare myself to join a little bit sooner than anticipated, but... <laughs> yeah, it was really unlucky. It was right in the middle of the match. You saw the other teammate was or the other team was FCing and uh decided to double click escape. Unfortunate. It happens. 
It really does. Yes, it is. All right, so it looks like Malashevsky going to be winning the role with a 97. That is uh, the fourth highest role you can get, so pretty good. Yeah, so I was <laughs> understandably a little bit upset about it. Malashevsky only picked first ban. First ban, don't really see that much nowadays, people selecting that. I see more people usually opting for a uh, for your first pick in that type of scenario. Yeah, generally what you see is that people will want to go for the second ban uh, just as a sort of measure where it's like, okay, I get to counterpick the other person's ban. So it's interesting. I wonder what his strategy is here. Mm -hmm. Another strategy that I tend to follow personally is to go for second pick because when you get second pick, then you get the last pick before tiebreaker, which he might be going for here in selecting first ban. That means Xylus is going to get the first pick. Looks like going to yeah. be banning out the Hidden 2. Uh, odd ban from Malashevsky. Never really expect him to ban a Hidden Map, but maybe Xylus. A little bit intimidating on this type of pick. Xylus going to be striking out. Lovely Ice Cream Princess Sweetie. That is understandable. That map is very gimmicky. Something Malashevsky is guaranteed to be strong on. And also going to be striking out the DT4. Two of the gimmick gear maps in the pool gone. Got the DT Tech gone and the Nomad Stack map gone. And for Malashevsky's last ban, going to be banning out Sky High, one of the speed maps. Very understandable against Xylus and also losing some speed maps against Swick last week. Going to make a lot of sense in both of these bans. Yeah, 100%. I think these bans follow the exact kind of float chart you want to ban against these players. I mean, Xylus, of course... Abandoning both the gimmick picks, especially DT4 needed to be gone at AR 10.5. We know that Silas really isn't comfortable on the ARs that high. That absolutely makes sense. And it looks like for the first pick, Malashevsky is going to be, or Silas is going to be picking DT3. I think this is killing time. Very versatile. DT2. DT2, yes. This is a map by Brony SE, also known as Psyka OK1. Very bursty, very high BPM, definitely something up Xylus' alley if he's going to want to take an early point here against Malashevsky. Absolutely. Now, this map is a cross between finger control patterns and some stamina patterns later on. It's absolutely everything Xylus' speed here. We'll see if Malashevsky can hold on. I think this is probably a Xylus win, but we will see going to the map. Xylus is shaking a lot. Oh, no. And also, this is only 235 BPM, and if you look at Malashevsky's act, he is definitely still comfortable at this BPM range. I don't think it's as high BPM as something like Dice that Swick defeated him on last week, which would uh, probably give Xylus an even bigger advantage, but he's going to have to really step it up here if he wants to beat Malashevsky on this map, because he has only dropped a few 100s, and his act is all the way down at 98. Yeah, absolutely. Xylus having a lot of trouble with this act battle right now. Malashevsky actually looks really comfortable and there's a break from Xylus to start us off! Oh no, Xylus dropping that combo is huge. Look at Malashevsky's act and he's still holding on to his FC. Look at the score lead. It has just exploded in Malashevsky's favor already. Looking so out of reach for Xylus even though we're only halfway through the map. Yeah, this is a little bit scary for Xylus. Look at Malashevsky, 99.8 accuracy and FCing. Already at 600k, this might be too big of a bridge for Xylus to cross. Yeah, it definitely is. Oh, Malashevsky finally dropping some act, but it already looks like Malashevsky is going to start off right out of the gates, exploding, just like last week. Looking to clock in one FC out of one map so far, going into his pick next. Yeah, and that Please. first pick breakpoint is so huge if you're Malashevsky. You do not want to give Xylus any chance to get any points on the board. Yeah, with such a high-level player like Xylus, you really want to really take advantage early, and Malashevsky is doing just that. And it looks like really? he is going to be getting his first FC of the match. Malashevsky going up 1-0 to on the breakpoint, DT2. Isn't it terrifying that we don't even read that off as NFC, but rather his first FC? Yeah, that's the scary thing about this player. He has just become such a titan in the last year. It's... Really awesome to see. Nice score, says Xylus. I have a feeling I'll be saying that a lot this match. Don't worry, brother. Us too. 
Yeah, we will see. And now Meleshevsky gets to play his game. He gets to pick whatever he wants off of that first map break point. It's a very comfortable spot to be in, honestly. Mm -hmm. And trying to consolidate this, I think he has a lot of options here to pick from. He's got an entire hard rock pool that I think he might be advantaged on against Silas, as well as three hidden maps remaining. He's just got so much to pick from. And I can't even really predict exactly what he'll go for. Yeah, that's the trouble with it. It's so hard to tell what Malachevsky's gonna go for. We, I want to guess tech, but I can't be totally sure on that. I think he could go for aim or tech. I'm feeling something like maybe HR's three or four, Hesperos or the Clockwork Rose, that finger control map or that cut stream tech map. Both would be great options for Malachevsky, but also an aim map too. Nomad one, hidden one, hard rock one. I think all right up his alley. He could also go for an alt map, maybe that Nomad 3. Really depends what he's feeling here. Yeah, the world is Malachevsky's oyster, honestly. He can go with anything here with a level of confidence that a lot of players don't have. And there's a Hard Rock 4 pick that is going to be a tech pip. Tech and the Hard Rock knocking on two of his strengths and I think one of Xylus's weaknesses. Hard Rock not being his favorite mod. I know he much prefers the Hiddens and the Double Times over this mod. But it's not something that he's incompetent on. He should definitely be putting up a good fight on this pick, I think. This map, Hesperos, I think it debuted in OWC last year. It was a hidden map. And it's become really popular in the tournament scene since then, being used in all sorts of slots as a hidden map, a nomad map. And now here in the round table as a hard rock map. Cut streams get really hard to hit on Hard Rock. Got a lot higher spacing, as well as much higher slider velocity. Yeah. And Xylus is going to find an early break. I do want to point out just one fun fact really quick. Hard Rock 4 is being played in both matches right now. Well, that's cool. Yeah, anyways, getting back to it, Xylus is going to find another break. Already showing his level of discomfort on this map compared to Malyshevsky with 99.5 ag. And no sign of a break anytime soon. And there goes Silas again with a chain miss on that burst. Malashevsky definitely had the right idea with this pick. Silas looks very uncomfortable on this, but Malashevsky, he is just doing exactly what we expect of him at this level. 99.2 going into the second quarter of this map. We've yet to get into any of the really difficult cut streams, but he gets through that first little difficulty spike section means he's going to get a little bit of free combo here to bolster up his score lead even more already about 100k yeah and i'm sure silas knows he understands that malashevsky is probably fc'ing right now and that he has to hold on really tight through this next section to get through yeah it must be so demotivating going up against a player like malashevsky it's like must be the same thing that you felt when you're going up against like maybe cookie z in like 2018 or uh vaxay in 2020 He's just this ever-present beast that you cannot count out of any map. And you just expect the most from him on every single one. And here we go into the cut streams. Or a slider section, I guess I am mistaken. <laughs> but... <laughs> There's a cut stream. Some yeah. cuts here there. Yeah, and Silas is just not comfortable. You're looking at that 96 accuracy. He needs Malachevsky to break, like, now to make up any lead. And even then, Silas still has to FC. It's a really scary spot for Xylus to be in, and I just don't see Malashevsky breaking anytime soon. Look at that level of comfort, and there goes Xylus on a slider break. That combo drop from Xylus is going to be losing him this pick, I think. But honestly, you can't really feel too bad about it if you're Xylus, because Malashevsky is just still going. Are we going to see two out of two here for Malashevsky, you think? I think we might. There's the hard stream. He hits it. I don't know how much hard is left in this map that Malashevsky might trip up on. Oh my god, I, this might be two! Yeah, there's nothing left here that's like much diff much more difficult than anything else in this map. I think Malashevsky is going to be getting his second full combo of the match already. Two out of two for Malashevsky, already over a million score. Is he going to do it? And he does! FCing the Hard Rock 4 Hesperos with, is that almost 99%? That is absolutely absurd. On a Hard Rock tech pick, how often do you like reasonably see that? Never. It's like one of the most niche skill sets in the game. Yeah, right. absolutely. Gonna be getting through here. Let's look at his score. 18 100s, 98.79%. I'd be 
damned if there is any hard rock score on the leaderboard with any better act than that. Yeah, and just to update everyone on our side match, Zudi Nager has just won against Enri 6-4. Oh, that's really close. Yeah, I'm Easy. surprised. But now here we are, 2-0 Malashevsky. Xylus gets to pick back. He's going to pick Nomad too. I think this makes sense. It's, it's Malashevsky showing off a bit of that stamina muscle, a bit of that aim muscle as well. Yeah. And also last week, Swick was able to win against Malashevsky on the Nomad too. So Xylus being a stream player, I think this pick makes a lot of sense from him. Absolutely. Honestly, that, that should be the strategy. Just like, okay, well, what did Malashevsky lose last time? Surely yeah. not much has changed in a week, right? Yeah, surely. And I mean, like, even, even if he can play everything, speed has always been his, like, I guess, worst skill set where... Like, a player who's extremely comfortable on speed will be able to match him on speed more than, say, like, an aim map or a tech map. Yeah, absolutely. This now, this isn't quite speed. So, it is it is going to be your standard Nomad 2 with a bit of an aim element to it. A bit more than, I would say, is usual. But, it's definitely not that speed. There is some stamina sections later on in the map, though. Mm-hmm. Definitely something that we should be seeing Xylus being a little bit more comfortable on. As you can see, he, he for once has the act lead over Malashevsky, something we have not seen yet in this match. And that is another aspect of Malashevsky as a player that's just so scary, I think. His accuracy. When you don't have an accuracy lead in a 1v1, unless you have an overwhelming combo lead, it is extremely hard to win points. So you really need to outplay him in the accuracy, and on most maps, it's just so difficult to do that. But here on the Nomad 2, so far, Xylus is looking to have that accolade, which is giving him a lead for now. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about Score V2 that makes it so scary in these 1v1 matches, right? And Xylus is dropping every slider end! Where did his Ooh. act go? It's gone. The accolade is gone. It's now equal between the two players. They're now back in favor of Xylus after Malashevsky drops a few hundreds on that stream. But there is still half the map to go. Gonna be looking to see if either of these players break, and that is a tragic act drop by Xylus. Gonna be losing the act lead and the score lead because of that. Yeah, here we go into the big flow aim streams. This is gonna be the defining factor of the Nomad 2. If anyone breaks here, it's over. But neither breaks, and we are into the chorus now. A few jumps Let's here. Calm for a second. The streams will get more space a little bit later into the map. I'm a little scared about that for both players. Especially with how close it is right now. And here we go. These are where the streams get the most intense. Will these players hold on? Malashevsky dropping act, but still holds on to the combo. Xylus with a huge act lead now, but he needs to hold on to his combo, or else Malashevsky will take control once again. It looks like both players are holding on. Yeah, going into that first really big stream, both players actually had the same act, and look at it now. It's almost a percent worth of difference. Xylus holding a lead by about 30k, but the question is, can he hold it for much longer? I think he has to MC this map to keep Malachevsky at bay. I think he does, but they've already gotten through the hardest streams of the map. It should be cake for them for the rest of this. Only some jumps remaining. You really cannot miss here if you're Xylus. So close. A double FC on this level of map pool is so absurd, by the way. It looks Absolutely. like we're going to get it. Here's the last stream. And he got it. Xylus gets a point. Now you hear all the time about the Nomad 1 act battle. The Nomad 2 act battle, how how like much does that realistically happen? Um, I mean, I feel like a lot of players nowadays are really comfortable on Nomad 2, so it's much more common than it used to be. But still, a double FC on this level of map is just absurd. And Malashevsky now 3-for-3, three three, although he lost the pick, he has 3 FCs out of 3 maps. So, keeping up his 100% FC rate, but Xylus getting on the board. But the pick goes back to Malashevsky, so I'm gonna see if he stays in that hard rock pool or maybe ventures outward into a DT map or maybe a hidden. Gonna go for the hard rock three. This pick makes a lot of sense for Malashevsky. He saw how uncomfortable Xylus was on that last pick with his accuracy and is going to stay in the HR pool with this finger control map, which is absolutely insane to be in this level of map pool, by the way. This map is so difficult on HR. Yeah. The finger control and aim control too. on this. Mm -hmm. 
We'll see, Xylus has been looking a little shaky on the aim all throughout today, so one of these aim control maps, I will say, probably trips him up. I think this is a really good pick from Malashevsky. Yeah, he's just one of the best control players in the game, and Xylus sh showing his uncomfortability on HR, on that HR4, I think we're probably going to see a similar performance of that, but if Malashevsky were to continue his FC streak on this, that would be absolutely absurd, because I don't even think there's a single HRFC on this map. Uh oh I could check really quickly. And you know what's the crazy part? This is quarterfinals. The pools will only be getting far harder from here. Oh wait, there's uh, three HRFCs on this. One by Malashevsky himself, and then Arnold and Ryuke also having HDHR and HRFCs respectively. So three FCs. Right. That is, um... Still not that many FCs. Three FCs on a map is still makes it really hard, I think. And here we go into the chorus. So far, neither player breaking, but Malashevsky holding the accuracy lead, which is going to be giving him the lead as long as combos are held by both of them. Yeah, it's a bit of a waiting game as we wait to see if anybody breaks. We are past the first quarter now. Break here would start to be devastating. Yeah, but this is one of the more calm sections of the map. You really need to hold your combos here, especially if you're Xylus with that accuracy deficit. Oh, but he drops. He slider breaks. That is so tragic for Xylus because Malashevsky is going to be eating up this free combo that it comes before the next Dora section. Yeah, that's really not a good place to break. Now it's Malashevsky's game once again. Malashevsky's world on these control picks, and we are all just living in it, or at least Xylus is right now. Score lead already almost 100,000 points, and with his accuracy all the way up at 99, it is going to be really hard for Xylus to stage a comeback unless Malashevsky were to completely collapse. And with the way he's looking now, I don't think that's really going to happen, is it? I don't think it is. We're halfway through the map now. If Malachevsky broke, it would be pretty big. He'd cap himself pretty hard, but he'd still have to break again later into the map for Silas to get a chance. And I think he'd need to drop accuracy as well. Yeah, we're also in like a slower section of something techier, and that's exactly what Malachevsky plays. I don't think Silas makes it back. Yeah, there is a difficulty spike coming up, though. There are a few very difficult cut streams, followed by some uh, 1 over 4 gap slider jumps that are very difficult to hit if you don't snap them correctly. And I think if we're going to see a break from Malashevsky at all on this map, it would have to be there if Silas wants to come back. And it's here, but he gets through it. Both of them get through it. That is very impressive, but there are still cut streams left in this section. In my opinion, one of the most difficult parts of this map. And both players break! And with that, it's just over. It is. Silas can't come back from the accuracy deficit as much as he wants to. The score lead is almost double in favor of Malashevsky over Xylus' score. That oh, is indeed. just scary. Yeah, both players unfortunately breaking. I was really hoping we'd see another FC, honestly. Yeah, that would be absolutely absurd on this map. I think one of the hardest in the pool, so it would have been, in my opinion, one of the most impressive scores you could set on this map pool. But there's still a lot of hard maps left to see uh, either of these players try to FC, so... Lucky with that. Malshevsky sure. getting tripped up by those back and forth. But the map is already pretty much over as he approaches 700k score. Yeah, very good fight by Xylus, but unfortunately just not enough to make it up against this monster of Malashevsky here. Reaching that 700k, and there's another point on the board for Malashevsky. 3-1 and one against Xylus now. Yeah, three to one, but the pick goes back to Xylus. He's gonna be able to pick now to try and keep up with Malashevsky. And I think this might just be one of the breaking points of the match because if you lose your pick down three to one, then you're down four to one. And that is very hard when you're up against a player with as diverse of a skill set as Malashevsky. You really need to win all of your picks against a player like this. Yeah, and not only are you down four to one, you're down four to one with Malashevsky picking next. <laughs> you do not want to be in that state at all. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And it looks like Xylus is going to go straight for the DT1, Children of Hell. This is such a classic map. I love to see this in a map pool on DT1. 
Yeah, you know what? It's a six-digit tiebreaker, and it's just everyone else is DT1. Mm-hmm. Six-digit tiebreaker, and I remember players like Angel Sim and Raffis going god mode on this in 2017. Back when this was... <laughs> This is one of the harder aim maps in the game with DT, obviously we've come a long way since then, but this map should bring some nostalgia for some older players, I think. Absolutely. Secret Pipe, man. Where has he been? I don't know, honestly. That's that's a name that I just haven't seen around. Mm -hmm. I'd love for him to come back. His maps were very much fun. And also... A lot of them timeless classics. A lot of you probably remember um, Game Over, I think it was called. Muzzy, Game Over. Uh, end Game. End Game, yeah. That one, I think, is the one a little more known than this, but nevertheless, this one, still very well known. Much loved classic. And it's also one of the longer maps in the pool, clocking in at four minutes with double time enabled. So we're going to be really seeing who misses further on into the map. Don't think either of these players will show much difficulty with the intro of this map, just some simple jumps. Not too much to break on here, unless you're nervous. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna see anything big happen until we get to a Kiai. Both players are already sitting at 150k. It's it's comfort. I mean, it's a classic aim pick, right? What's gonna happen is both players, someone will be like 700k and the other will FC. Yeah. That or someone is going to miss exactly in the middle and have their score capped at like 700k and it's gonna be really sad. Oh, of course. As is the fate of someone playing an aim pick. Mm -hmm. They all still both players getting through the first third of the map without any difficulties. Their accuracies are tied at 99.84. Both of them just look so comfortable on this. It's just going to be who slips up for half a second, who just misses one note, just one over aim, just one finger lock will lose you this pick, I think. Yeah, here we are in the build up the calm before the storm. Do you feel the Kiai coming? I'm ready. I'm ready, Titani. I'm so ready for this Ki. When the jumps get more intense, that's where we're going to be expecting to see a break maybe from either of these players. But it looks like neither of them are showing any signs of letting up so far. Just notice they both have the same accuracy, 99.88. It's as close <laughs> as it could be, honestly. Yeah, they both could be SSing right now. and That's really scary thinking about how good players have become. Like back in 2017, this would be like a god mode clip for both of them. Look Absolutely. at that, both of them getting through it. There's a little burst there, neither player dropping any accuracy. Both still at 99.90, that is so absurd, but it's gonna be who gets through these key eyes, who's gonna win the pick. And it looks like both of them are gonna get through it with that same accuracy. What is going on? And now they know. Yeah, now they know. Now they're both nervous. Hopefully, hopefully Xylus is still not shaking in his boots because he need. oh no! Not like this, Silas, no! I can't no. believe it. I can't believe it. That is so tragic. He just misses right after the break. There wasn't even that much intense patterning going on. I think on. it's nerves. That was all nerves. It had to be. So tragic. Malinus right there. It solidifies. And look at Malashevsky right now. He's MCing confidently. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about anyone. He's got 99.93, and he's probably going to lock out this FC because that's just who he is as a player. Can't do anything against him. Silas breaking again. Oh no, it's all falling apart at the end here as Malashevsky just goes crazy on it. Silas, I don't think he can recover at this point. He definitely can't. Malashevsky, all he's giving him is another 100, but he does finally break. But still, the score lead is just too much for Malashevsky, and there's not enough map for Silas to save your comeback, unfortunately. Yeah, hard-fought battle. They were deadlocked even for quite the second there, but unfortunately, Silas finding the break in th that slower part, and it was just his downfall. As Malashevsky takes away another point, he gets to pick next. It is terrifying if you're Silas. Yes, this is much danger for Silas now, going down 4-1 to one with Malashevsky's next pick. And if anything is um, indicated by his last two picks, I have a feeling he might just want to stay in the Hard Rock pool, you think? Yeah. Still got an HR2 remaining. I think that would be a great pick for him. Maybe gonna stay away from that HR1 and aim map. A little more accessible for Xylus, I think, compared to some of the other hard rocks that are in the pool. But other than that, 100%. I think Malashevsky still got an alt map and a tech map in Nomad with three and four, as well as three hidden maps. 
Yeah, he has options for sure. Nomad 3, Nomad 4, Hidden 3, and I would say Hard Rock 2 are all definitely potential options. I think Hidden 4 is going to be a pick for Xylus next. That's a speed map. That might be something he opts into as one of his more comfortable skill sets. Yeah, but, Dead or Die is absolutely the kind of map that Xylus needs right now. Yeah, he needs that map, but I feel like every other map in this pool might just be favored to Malashevsky. Yeah, it's an uphill battle. And there is Nomad 1, your classic aim pick, your consistency to catch Xylus off right off of that DT1. Mm. He saw that DT1. I beat you on DT1. You know what? I'm going to take you to the slower aim map. So you don't even get that higher BPM. That's a little bit more comfortable for you. This is my BPM range, says Malashevsky. And he is just a champion on these types of maps. You see it on leaderboards. He is just number one on all of these maps with HDHR, like extremely high act. And you know, with Malashevsky, I'm sure if given the option, he might just take HDHR on this if given the chance. Yeah, but. that's the type of guy that Malashevsky is. Mm -hmm. And nevertheless, it's only 7.2 stars. Definitely going to be accessible for Xylus if Malashevsky were to trip up. But as one of the most consistent aim players I think we've ever seen, I'm really doubting the possibility of that happening already. But I can't, I can't count him out. We're 100 combo into the pick. Yeah. We'll see, mostly in the key eyes. Now, the big defining thing, I think, if it comes down to it, is going to be the end of each key eye, because they have massive jumps. Mm -hmm. That big spacing is something that we don't see on DT1, and it's going to be a defining factor for who comes out on top of this Nomad 1, I think. Yeah, the difficulty spike is going to be defining this one. But the bridge sections before the key eyes are relatively calm. No one having any trouble at the beginning. We are finally into one of the courses, which means the jumps are going to be getting larger. And you can see the difference in spacing between this and the DT1 already. Those jumps are taking up about half the screen. But as you mentioned, there are still some very, very high spacing jumps at the end of each chorus. And we are about to be getting into them. Hey, nobody getting caught off on the first key eye here. It's going to be a little bit calm for a second. Yeah, but the I think average no on one spacing. I think these bridge sections might be a little bit of a trap because they still have some pretty decently spaced jumps. Like you can still break on them if you manage to get distracted or just lose your focus for half a second. But it looks like both these players are going to be remaining comfortable, but the accuracy lead is still in favor of Malashevsky. Yeah, about I want to say a 0.7% accuracy lead. It's really big. Yeah, especially on a map like this. But here we go into the next chorus. We're going to be maybe seeing a break from either of these players because the map is harder here than it is during the bridge section. But both of them remaining comfortable so far. Yeah, they're both playing that waiting game. Like, oh, I hope he breaks. I hope he breaks. I hope he breaks. But getting caught on the high spacing again. They're both FCing still. And now because of that break, they both know it. Xylus hoping to not get nervous this time. And I think we all pray for his sake that he doesn't get nervous because he needs to see a break from Malashevsky if he wants to win this pick because the accuracy is still in his favor. Yeah, look at the jumps on this guitar solo. These are definitely the hardest jumps of the map so far. Oh, and Xylus breaks. That is so tragic. Unfortunate, and now watch, Malashevsky's gonna be able to take it away here. We're going into the last key eye very soon. Yeah, and we've, I feel like we've seen this happen with almost every map so far. Xylus breaks, but we just don't see the break from Malashevsky to match. And with that accuracy and combo lead, it is just exploding in his favor. He is already up by over 100,000, even though it feels like Xylus just broke 10 seconds ago. That's the crazy thing about Score V2. You need an accuracy and a combo lead in order to gain score against your opponent. And when you have neither of those, then it just explodes out of your favor. And Malashevsky is just exploding with the lead right now. Yeah, and Malashevsky, he can feel comfortable with this pick. He doesn't have to be as nervous as Silas is. For Silas, he has one point on the board. Malashevsky has four, soon five. Oh my god. he Is he going to FC this too? 99.83. Right? This map is so hard into the ending. These are actually the hardest jumps of the map. Those are full cross screens, guys, and he FCs it. Oh my god, Malashevsky with another FC. What is this guy?
at the beginning of the match, I said that he was arguably the best player in the world, and that, that's, a, that's a small regret I have. I should not have added that word, arguably. Yeah, definitely in tournaments. This guy is the guy to beat. He got over 1 million score on the Nomad 1. That is just the peak comfort you can have on any map. Xylus saying nice score. That's all you really can do. And Xylus getting a really good run as well. 6 100s, 1 miss, 697k is going to be enough to beat most players, I feel. But against this guy... <laughs> Yeah, it's the No One One Classic that I talked about. It's an FC and a 700k. The 700k is never a bad score, but it's just not enough when you're playing against Malishevsky. Yeah, it's. I just can't imagine how demotivating it must be to play against this player. He's just stronger than almost anything we've seen. And Xylus is going to be going for the Nomad 3 pick. Not expected out of him. I thought Malishevsky was going to pick this. This is interesting. He might not feel comfortable in that hidden four. That hidden four might be something he's intentionally avoiding. Hmm. I mean, it makes sense. Malashevsky is a very strong hidden player as well as a strong speed player, so... Definitely something that Malashevsky can do. But I guess Xylus just feeling a little more comfortable on this for some reason. He knows more than we do, so... That will be the pick. We're going right, to be getting here we right go. into this. Xylus' last chance. Mm -hmm. This has to be his last stand, but picking alt against one of the most proficient alt players in the game just can't help but feel it might be a little bit questionable, but he needs something here. He's not going to win this match if he doesn't take something that he's not likely to win. And it looks like Malshevsky is going to be finding an early break, so Xylus is going to be having an early combo and act lead, which I think is going to be huge for the future of this map. Yeah, with Malashevsky finding second break afterwards, there might be a level of comfort here that Silas has that Malashevsky might not. Definitely unexpected, but I think a welcome sight to see. Silas really needs this point. He wants to stay alive in the winner's bracket. Absolutely. That said, he does have to play a Malashevsky pick right after this if he wins this. Mm -hmm. I think he has to win two Malashevsky picks if he wants to take it back to tiebreaker. Yep, wins this, wins a Malashevsky pick, wins his own pick, Malashevsky. Yeah, that's how he brings it back to tiebreaker. And even long then, he has to win tiebreaker against Malashevsky. Yeah, that's definitely a long and hard road ahead for Xylus in this match. But we can't count him out yet. He's got an SS so far through the first quarter of this map. But Malashevsky is re-establishing his accuracy, almost back up to his very known 99. So if Xylus were to chain, Brit, chain break, he would definitely start losing score quickly if Malashevsky holds on. Yeah, the thing was, Malachevsky did break, but he broke for very early on, so it's not affecting his score too much. You'll see it's only about a 30k difference. Mm -hmm. Breaking at the beginning doesn't do too much bad for your score, because the combo difference is only 80 combo. I think most of the score difference is much made up by Xylos' accuracy lead, having a 0.7 lead. It's gonna give him about that much score. But here we are into one of the courses where I think the aim control becomes a really difficult factor of this map. But both players are getting through it with relative ease. Yeah, both players gonna get through that ki. I would say that this part is actually a little bit harder just on that aim element, but both players are hitting through it so far. Yeah, Xylus making me eat my own words. He looks extremely comfortable on this alt map. Definitely a sight for sore eyes if you're tired of Malashevsky just pounding everyone on anything that isn't like a Nomad 2 or a 270 BPM speed map. Yeah, and Silas knows, hey, I have the FC, Malashevsky doesn't. This is my game. If I just FC through the rest of this, I just win. I have a, a chance here. I'm praying for Silas's nerves, though. He got nervous on that DT1. Maybe it might be a little bit easier to control your nerves on a non-high BPM map. But still, I mean, I'd be shaking in my boots right now. Just maybe this does take a lot of aim control, and if he shakes too hard, then it's just over. He needs to hold on with everything he has if he wants to stay in his match. And I mean, right now, Silas is putting up like a Malashevsky-esque performance on this. Like, 99.86. This accuracy is something we've only really seen from Malish in this tournament. Now look at this. 
He hits those big flowing patterns. Here comes the stars, the big aim control. This might de determine it. It looks like he's getting through it. And Mount oh, Shefty oh, breaks. Shefty. It's over. Silas. Silas getting the point. I'm sorry for doubting you, Silas. Wow. He is beasting this alt map. He finally breaks near the end, but it just doesn't matter. He has made up enough score to take the lead. And he is going to be starting his trail of a comeback against Malashevsky. He's going to be going back on the board, getting his second point. Now two to five. He made yeah, us eat our words. <laughs> he did. No, I was like looking into this like, he's giving up, isn't he? And then, no, he's not. He's absolutely not giving up. He's fighting with everything he has. Wait, they got the exact same accuracy on that. That is crazy. Three 100s, two 50s, and four misses. Exact same accuracy. But the combo wow. for Xylus making all of the difference here. Yeah, I mean, well, Xylus dropped all the act at the end, right? Like, it's it was just too late for Malachevsky to make up anything. Xylus putting himself back in the game saying, hey, it's not over. Malachevsky's not winning six and one. Z and Xylus is trying he, to... He is. Xylus is trying to bait out a Nomad 4 pick from Malashevsky here. Saying, mm -hmm. for Nomad 4, right? You're gonna pick Nomad 4, right? Banger! I love this strat from Xylus. The baiting is absolutely something that we don't see enough in OC tournaments. Oh, 100%. We need we need more of just, just that talk in the tourney chat, you know? Mm-hmm. Too, too many tournament chants are just too serious. Yeah. I remember back in 2020, there was this weird culture where people were just like overly toxic in tourney chat to anyone they were like friends with in matches. At least it happened in four digit tournaments. I'm not so sure about open rank, but there were just so many bans back then, but it looks like it's disappeared as people have gotten more serious. But Malshevsky not gonna take the bait, gonna go for hidden one. Definitely, I think a safer pick. G2, our way, Kadoku's X. This is a very different styled A map, I think, than any other A map in the pool. Lots of linear yeah. It's It's really weird, because the only way that I know how to describe it is as a math learner. I If I say Tatamai aim, there are people who absolutely know what that means. <laughs> but if you're not a mapper, you have no idea what Tatamai aim is. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a mapper. I have I think I have a basic understanding of Tatamai aim, but basically for the viewers at home, uh, it's, it's weird. It's really weird. It's weird not in like a Mirage style of weird aim, but like... You, you can only know it if you look at his maps. That's all, all I can say. Of course. Well, see, it's, it's, you know, it's definitely awkward. You said a lot of linear jumps, and that's going to be a big part of it. There's also some really hard uh, long sliders, as well as about two-thirds into the map, there is a very difficult portion that might determine the fate of both these players here. Yeah, some, uh, I think they're perfectly stacked kick slider patterns that just really, if you aren't prepared for them, they will trip you up and they will make you break your combo. I believe this map was also pooled in United States Cup this year, and the average score on it was fairly low, apart from some of the strongest hidden tourney players in the game, like Takedo, I think, performing really well on this in that tournament. Let's see here... All right, you can definitely see the Tatemai aim going in full force so far. And here we go into the full screen linear jumps. Xylus is breaking a lot. That is very bad. His accuracy just went all the way down to 93, and Malashevsky is still holding the SS. Yeah, Xylus is not comfortable on these linears at all, and that's his big problem is look at Malashevsky right now. This is really scary. We're getting a little bit of a refrain section here. We're giving a little bit of a chance for Xylus to build up combo again before the big KI. Yeah, Xylus definitely needs to see a break from Malashevsky though in this KI if he wants to start staging a comeback on this pick. Yeah, the question is, will we see that honestly with this Malashevsky? Yeah, he's like, like asking Malashevsky to start inting on hidden aim is like. Like, I don't know, asking Vaxade into DT1 or Bubble Man to bottom score a tech pick. Like, this is just his bread and butter. And he is still holding on to his SS, Xylus saying, oh, as I think all of us are saying, watching him continue his SS into the second half of this map. Silas, you can see, yeah, he, he's not really sure if he'll win halfway through the map. Malachevsky's still SSing! Yeah, it's... 
it's just demotivating. Like, Xylus, he's reestablished his combo really well. He's up at 500 combo. This would be putting up a contentious score against almost any other player in the world. But Malashevsky, when he's holding his SS into the final third of the map, there's nothing you can do. But here is that very difficult section you were mentioning before the map. Right here, some screens and some layered kick sliders. Not going to be tripping up either of them so far. But Silas goes and he breaks a lot. I think it's just over. I think it is. Malashevsky, even though he doesn't have the SS, he just has such a huge lead. 600k to Silas is 400k. And Silas has to build combo back up. There's just no chance of recovery right now against Malashevsky when he's looking like this. Yeah, by the way, there's no hidden FCs on the leaderboard for this map. Not a single oh, one. Of course. The only modded FC on this map is Utami with hidden hard rock. Is Malashevsky going to get the first hidden FC on this in tournament? There's no shot, right? And his accuracy, oh my god, 99.92, he only has the ending left. It looks like he's going to be putting up another stellar score in this matchup against Xylus. And he gets through the final jumps. He's got it. First hidden FC on our way in the round table. Going to be defeating oh, Xylus by god. the score of 6-2. to two. What a score from Malashevsky. 1-100. What? Who is this guy? Uh, what can we do? What can we do? Like, we all just need to quit right now. This guy is just too good. I think he's too Look, good. Man, he's trying to earn his ticket to LA in the summer. Can you blame him? He is yeah, looking I mean, so good right now. I'd want a free trip to LA too, so I don't blame him for going all out. But this is just something else. Xylus putting up good scores in this match, but Malashevsky just way too much to handle. Wow, absolutely impressive stuff from Malashevsky. Congratulations to him on a win. Moving on in the winner's bracket, Silas is going to be moving down to the loser's bracket now as Malashevsky moves on to winner's semifinals. Yeah, he's just one step closer to that trip to LA. Malashevsky, favorite in this tournament, I think favorite in any 1v1 tournament for the next six months. Going to be continuing his march of death forward in the round table qualifier. Silas going down to losers, I think he might have a better time there than up here against Malashevsky. But still, it is just such a death pit down there. It is going to be very tough for him to come back, but I think he's definitely capable. Very strong player. Yeah, and moving on, of course, we will have harder pools in the future. It's only going to get, actually, I would say easier and easier for Malashevsky as he really shows how hard he scales on those, those harder maps. And, you know, he's facing the winner of Nineric and MCY4, both Two players who are very, very good in their own right, but don't scale as hard as Malachevsky. It's going to be a bit scary for them next week. Yeah, absolutely. And funnily enough, Malachevsky looks like he's dropped two points in his first two matches here, dropping two to Swick and now two to Xylus. Going to be seeing if Ninric or MCY is going to be able to win more than two points against him. But that's going to be hard press as the pool gets really harder. It looks like Zudinator is on the other side of that, and now... On to loser's bracket, it looks like we've got Xylus going up against Mustache, who just defeated Amamiya Kokoro in a very intense tiebreaker match that was very close on a lot of picks. Going to be going down to face Mustache. And we've got other matches down here, such as Takedo versus Inner Camping that is yet to be played. And it looks like Enri is going to be facing the winner of that in the next week. Enri versus Takedo would be really funny, I think. I hope that yeah. happens. They're the exact same player. They the are. Same. Like, have you seen their hand cams on their streams? Like, oh, yeah. They have the same angle, like, same type of profile aesthetic. He told me, actually, you can't see it in their hand cams, but they also have the same mouse pad. Oh, my God. That is crazy. Yeah. But yeah. Takito's going to have to get through intercamping first, which is definitely going to be a very intense match. Both of them are top-tier tourney players. And it's crazy how they have to face each other in loser's bracket one. That is just how crazy a competition is here. 100%. Everyone is here for blood. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, looks like upcoming matches. We've got 19 hours from now at uh, 16 UTC tomorrow. 15 yeah. UTC. 15 UTC, okay. Ninric versus MCY4 going to be the first match. And then at 20, we've got Bartek versus Lolo234, so known as Kurumi. Should be a very interesting winner's bracket match. And then Takedo vs. Intercamping at 21 right after that. 
Yeah, it's going to be very exciting, but that's going to be it for today. Thank you, everybody, for watching the Roundtable 2 Qualifier Tournament. I know we had a lot of issues in starting with some of these matches today, but thank you for sticking with us. And we will see you tomorrow at 15 UTC for the start of our Sunday matches. Peace.